My name is Minister Bernadette Cornegay, and I will be your worship leader this morning. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Amen. Lift up your head, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And I'm going to drop on down here so that we know that this is our assignment today. To make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come to, before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful, hallelujah, unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Has he been good to anybody this week? For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. And his mercy and his truth endure through all generations. Now we're going to make some noise and give God some praise. We're going to make some noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to put some demons on the run this morning. Hallelujah. They have no place here this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo. I am so grateful. Hallelujah. That God continues to find me worthy. Hallelujah. Nobody but you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we're here. Now, we have made some noise for the Lord. But if you want to think about what the Lord has done to bless New Calvary. He has given us the man and woman of God who has been faithful for 36 years. They have been dedicated for 36 years. They have walked in his way for 36 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I am so grateful that God brought me to this house of worship to be under these two loving people hallelujah i know i have to tell you i am when i think about what other pastors do i don't know all of them but i do know one thing pastor and sister oliver are two faithful faithful leaders to all of their members i tell you when the time when you think this is not I'm, if i cry it's okay because that's just how i feel when you think about you, you, you're someplace and you don't, you're not sure what the, how things are going to go and you feel alone, who shows up? I know you're right. I know you're right. 
Pastor and Sister Oliver, they just show up to be able to support you in any way that they can. You don't find other pastors like that. They're not out there trying to make sure their members are safe and comfortable. He shows up, and Sister Oliver always, always at his side, leading and pushing. And, you know, and, and I can hear her saying this most of the time, Vincent. <laughs> because you know, I'm telling you, she's always at his side. I'm pretty sure that Pastor, when you guys are not here in this establishment, she's like calling you Pastor Oliver. <laughs> I, I am so grateful. I hope everybody in here is elated and excited that we get to celebrate this man and woman of God today. God is good because I was sitting at home this morning when I should have been listening to the Sunday school lesson. I was trying to focus on, okay, Lord, give me what I need to say. And the Holy Spirit was just like, just get up there. And it's going to come falling out. You know, it's like you always try to practice something, but some things you can't practice. Hallelujah. I, I am, I'm excited that I am your worship leader this morning, and we're going to move on in the service because we got some things we need to take care of after the service. So everybody take a look at your program. Look to the very bottom, and you'll see your instructions. Amen. We're going to have a selection by the male chorus. Amen. Following the male chorus, we're going to have scripture by Reverend Ella Priest Edwards. And then we're going to have prayer by Deaconess Laverne Adderley. Uh, please be seated, everybody, in that order. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I refuse to let nobody steal my joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm standing to read the scripture. You know, there are so, so many scriptures that we could find to celebrate this wonderful day for our bishop and first lady. But I was led to this one. And that's 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. And we do ask that you stand, if you're able, to reverence the word of God. It's just two scriptures, but these scriptures are powerful. It says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Here it is right here. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that threadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. And we can certainly say that about Bishop Oliver. He is worthy of his reward. God bless you. Good morning, New Calvary. It is an honor and a privilege for me to pray this prayer. I've been with our bishop and first lady for 36 years. And that's been a blessing. And um, have I gotten on their nerves? Yes. Have they gotten on mine? Yes. (laughs) Just being honest. But I love them. And I thank and praise God for them. Let us pray. Father God, we come this morning with thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for 36 years of pastoral and first ladyship. Thank you, God, for the woman and man of God. I just thank you that they are in my lives, Lord. They help to grow me up in you. And that's so very important. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for your mercy. You said ask, Lord, and we asked 36 years ago that we have a pastor here at New Calvary. You sent him. Thank you, God. And they have blessed over the 36 years. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask you to forgive us our sins and our trespasses. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, continue to bless them and keep them. Strengthen them, Lord. Show them which way you would have for them to go. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. You keep making a way. You keep opening doors. You keep providing. You've kept us in spite of. And I thank you. Nobody but you, God. Nobody but you. Lord, you knew just what we needed, even when we didn't. I thank you. I bless your name. Lord, I do ask that you remember all of those that are sick and shut in, those that are hungry and homeless, those that are bereaved, those that are going through, Lord. Bless them with the blessings you see they stand in the need of. Go with us and stand by us. Not only bless Bishop and Sister Oliver, but bless the entire family. Lord, we've gone through some struggles with the grandchildren, but you and you alone, God, brought them out. Thank you, God. We praise your holy and righteous name. We thank you for New Calvary and you placing him here and her here. Thank you, God. We celebrate with thanksgiving, giving you glory and giving you honor because that's just what they would want us to do. We seek you first and we know that everything else will be added unto us. Thank you, God. This is my prayer. I thank you and I praise you. Go with us and stand by us. Lead God and direct. Let us be good followers as he leads us on. In your name, we thank you and we praise you. No other name like the name of Jesus. We have power because we call on the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Is there anybody in here who has something to be thankful for? Have God done anything for you just today? Today he woke us up. Yes, hallelujah. Anybody got anything they're going through right now? The only one who know about it is the Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's a great God. He's been good. Hallelujah. He's been mighty, mighty good. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. We want to bless the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy, he's worthy. Yes, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Only you can thank God for what he's done for you. Pastor Priest, the other week, the rocks will cry out if we don't cry out. We don't want rocks crying out for us. We want to thank God on our own accord. Hallelujah. I am truly grateful to God. I tell you, I am truly grateful to God. I'm grateful every Wednesday night. When Pastor Oliver makes the sacrifice yes. to teach us yes. Bible study, I'm grateful. Amen. He never fails. He's there faithfully. Faithfully. Not some Wednesdays. I mean, 52 Wednesdays in a year, he was there for 52 Wednesdays. You know, every year he's right there faithfully at his post. And I thank him. I thank God that, that he rightly devised the word for us. Mm. That we may no longer be babes in Christ. <laughs> that the word will grow us up. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. And I thank God for Sister Oliver always being there for him. I'm going to share this. This Wednesday we had a, a great experience in Bible study. Pastor was teaching a lesson and he got tested immediately because somebody rung his doorbell. And then Sister Oliver said, I'll get it, Pastor. She goes through the door and she starts talking to the person. And I guess Pastor said, wait a minute, I have to go over here and see who this is. But it's just faithfulness. It's just, and, and I say that because everything is not serious. Everything is not serious. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we have joy in our pastor. And our pastor always making jokes. <laughs> so I just want to thank you and I want to ask pastor right now pastor are you doing the announcements today no okay All right. I just wanted to make sure okay you want to introduce the okay praise God I'm just getting my marching orders guys and the announcements this morning, by way of um, giving, sowing a seed, you can use Giblify, you can use the Cash App, which is dollar sign, new cab, all caps, N-E-W-C-A-V. You can drop off your offering right here at the church, or you can mail it in. And our address is New Calvary Baptist Church, 610 South Hill Street. Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. And I just talked about the Bible study that we have, but also we have Bible studies every Wednesday at 7 p.m., and it's on Facebook Live at Vincent P. Oliver. And then we also have uh, Sunday school every Sunday morning. And we're on Zoom, and it's from 830 to, it says here 930, but because we're back in again, we stop at 915 in case somebody come on after 915 looking for us. We stop so that we can make sure we get here on time. Amen. And then um, the meeting ID is 731-2689-4559.
And if you have any questions, you can call Dr. Sheila Nichols, and, and I believe um, Sister um, Deaconess Fryer is putting things across the screen so that you can see the information. Amen? Amen. And again, our announcement is that we're celebrating our pastor and first lady. 36 years. And then we have some April birthdays. Um, please look at your program. And accordingly, wish everyone a happy birthday. Amen. You know, it, it feels good when people think about you and say happy birthday. Amen. So we want to thank God. And we, um, we also have, uh, we're going to have a selection from the male chorus. And then we're going to have an introduction of this powerful preacher coming from her husband. Okay. All right. I, I, I get excited, and I, I missed a little step, but I'm, I'm going to do some pastor preach the message called Reset. I'm going to reset. <laughs> I'm going to reset and back up and pray over the offering. Amen? <laughs> Father in heaven, we come once again, God, thanking you for this day. God, we come thanking you for the resources that you have given us. Father God, we thank you that we are able to give part of that to this ministry Amen. that has blessed us. And then, God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that the ones who handle the funds, the trustees, that you steer them, you lead them, you guide them. God, we are so grateful for all that you do. We take none of it, none of it for granted. We know that all blessings, every good and perfect gift comes from above. And we're thanking you in advance, God, for what you're going to do and how you're going to do it in our finances. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And guess what, you guys? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still um, on pre-COVID time sometimes. You know, when they used to come around with the basket and you put your offering in the basket. But you can give your offering after the church service. Trustees are in the back of the church. You can put your offering in for whatever we're going to do today. So whatever you want to give. And then give liberally. I'm a witness that if you just open up your hand and give, God puts it right back in there. And he does it above and beyond what we could even think about. I'm telling you, I am a witness. I see a lot of quick Pastor, are we, am I okay? All right. I'm just trying to look, because sometimes I look at different people, they look like you, people will hurry up and let you know you forgot something. And I just want to make sure that I'm on track. Thank you, Pastor. If my pastor say I'm good, then I'm good. <laughs> Okay, so we're, I'm going to go back, and a male chorus is going to bring us to the election. Wait, wait a minute. I knew, I knew there was a puzzle somewhere. Oh, okay. Okay. Reset. <laughs> I'm resetting one more time. You know, that's the thing about God. He allows you more than one chance. So I'm about, to, I'm about to get this thing right today. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have the introduction of our guest preacher. She's not really a guest. We know her very well. Amen. We know that she can bring the word. I'm not going to introduce her, though, because that's her husband's job. And um, he's going, she's going to be introduced by the Reverend Herbert Owens. And then following the introduction, the male chorus will sing. Reverend Shirley Owens will preach the word, and we're going to say amen. amen. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen. Don't forget about the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 And honor his great name today, because he is worthy to be praised. Oh, man, I'm so happy to be here today to celebrate with my friends 
and his wife and all of the good people here at New Calvary. My wife told me, she said, when you get up to do the introduction, just say, New Calvary, here's Reverend Sterling. All right. <laughs> but I'm going to be hard-headed today <laughs> because you all are in for a treat. This lady has been the love of my life for over 50 years. Well, all right. Not only that, but she has supported me in ministry from the time I did my initial sermon back in 1977. She has been my staunchest supporter. When I passed the Rock of Ages and she told me that God had called her to preach, I knew it, but she had to know it. And uh, we got her in ministry. I worked with them and got her ordained. <laughs> And now she get called more than I do. <laughs> but I will tell you this. Not only is she a great woman of God, but she's a terrific wife and mom. She's a terrific grandmother to her grandchildren. I and mean, then we got a little great grandson that stole both of our hearts. She spoiled him rotten. And she's a devoted friend to all those who she's friendly with, you know? And I just believe that if you are listening, there's something in this word from her today for everybody. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce to some and present to others my sweet <laughs> Reverend Shirley Owens, Rock of Ages Baptist Church.
me, Lord. I need you to hold my hand. Hallelujah. As shaky as it is right now, Lord, I need you, God, to hold my hand. Glory be to God. We give glory and honor and praise to the God of our salvation this blessed Sunday morning. We greet you all, New Calvary, and friends, with the joy of Jesus and his unconditional love. We honor the angel of this house in the person of Bishop, Reverend Dr. Vincent P. Oliver and his beautiful wife, Sister Veronica Oliver. We want to congratulate you both on 36 years of pastoral service unto God's people. We want to honor our husband in the person of Pastor Emeritus Reverend Dr. Herbert J. Owens Sr. And to this fine slate of preachers before me, beside me, and behind me, to God be the glory to all of our deacons, to all of the members, the saints, and the friends. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, I come before you, O oh God. Thanking you, Father, for being who you are, O oh God, and thanking you for your sovereignty and your Holy Spirit, which leads us and guides us through all truth, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity, again, O oh God, to stand behind another sacred desk to proclaim your word. Father, again, I ask if you would open up the ears of the unsaved so that they, too, may come running and asking, what must I do to be saved? I've studied, O oh God, but I need your spirit to guide me. And Father God, I prepared, but I need your preaching power. Father, please allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you truly are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. For those of you that have your swords, if you would turn with me to the 19th book of the New Testament entitled Hebrews, and we will be coming from chapter 13, verse 5. That's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, and when you found it, if you would please stand with me to reverence of God's holy and his righteous word, if you can. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from the King James Version, and God's word reads as thus, let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If I were to title this message on this morning, it would be God's promises to his servants. God's promises to his servants. I went to the Bible dictionary to look up the word promise. And it says, God's announcement of his plan of salvation and blessings to his people, one of the unifying themes integrating the message and the deeds of the Old and New Testaments. Throughout the book of Hebrews, which was written by the Apostle Paul, we find some of the greatest encouragements, rules, regulations, and promises referring to why God will never leave us nor forsake us. When we read it, we find it to be a book of encouragement, not discouragement. And Pastor Oliver, I need to put a note into here that I've taken one of the classes under the instruction of Dr. Wright, so I had to dig a little deeper before I stood this morning because I needed to find some nuggets. And the nuggets that I found were, in the book of Hebrew, it's broken down into six divisions. In the first division found in chapters 1 and 2, it tells us about the great salvation and why the Son of God is better than the prophets and the angels, assuring us that he will never leave us. Division 2, found in chapters 3 and 4, tells us about Christ being better than the servant Moses and about God's recreational rest that is stored up for his believers. Division 3, found in chapters 5 through 8, verse 6, 
tells us about our great high priest, the order of the high priest, our assurance of the hope, Melchizedek, and why his priesthood was greater than Aaron's, Melchizedek being a type of Christ, and why Christ mediated a better covenant which was established upon better promises. The vision four found in chapters eight, verses seven through 10, chapter 10, tells us of the new covenant being better than the old, the ordinances and the sanctuary that sacrifices to the new covenant, and why the new covenant is also the last will and testament of Christ sealed by his blood. Division 5, which is most people's favorite chapter in Hebrews, which is chapter 11, tells of, of his superiority of the faith way. And finally, Division 6, found in chapters 12 and 13, gives us instructions concerning our walk and worship as believers assuring us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. I'm listening, Dr. Wright. I'm listening. <laughs> this is an assurance that we should never misinterpret what God's word says, which is old school rhetoric for his promises that he made back then are still relevant today. Amen. God's main per promise to Abraham, as recorded in Genesis 22, 16, 17, despite Abraham's failures and his sins, God kept his promise and baby Isaac was born. Many of God's promises do not depend on our character, but on his faithfulness. We will obtain and enjoy what God has promised if we diligently apply ourselves to the development of our spiritual life. We need to know that as we, the saints of God, we have more of God's promises than Abraham had, but what keeps us from making a spiritual progress is our lack of faith in God's promises. Let's take a look at a farmer. He knows that he will not reap a harvest if he is sitting on the porch looking at the seeds. He must get up and get busy. He must plow and plant and weed, cultivate, and perhaps water the soil. The same goes for us when we are seeking spiritual security and maturity in God. For the believer who neglects church fellowship, ignores his Bible, and forgets to pray is not going to reach much of a spiritual harvest. Amen? Amen. God not only gave Abraham a promise, but he also confirmed the promise with an oath. When a witness takes an oath in court, he is confronted with the words, so help me God. We call on the greater to witness for the lesser. But none is greater than God, so he swore by himself. So help me, me. <laughs> God did not do this only for Abraham, as Hebrews 6 and 17 says. He has also given his promise and his oath to heirs of promise. Yeah. Abraham and his descendants are the first of these heirs, as found in Hebrews 11, 9. But all believers are included as Abraham's spiritual seed, found in Galatians 3 and 29. So... so as our assurance of salvation is... guaranteed by God's promises and God's oaths, which are two immutable things, which is found in Hebrews 6 and 18, which gives us a strong consolation and great encouragement concerning the hope that's set before us. And that hope is his promises to his servants. Amen. Pastor Oliver, over these last 36 years, Years. I'm sure that you taught New Calvary that the Bible is not just a book of instructions before leaving earth, but you have proven and shared that it's a book whose central theme is Christ. You have studied and reiterated to them that they can find from Genesis to Revelation the proof that Jesus never leaves them nor forsakes them. You have taught them that the Bible is the infallible authority containing the word of God as he reveals himself to man with the assurance that he will never leave them nor forsake them. You have taught them 
my brother, that God used 40 men whom we call the prophets by divinely inspiring them to write the Bible with him being the author. You taught them that God used these men to inform them of the manifestation of Jesus Christ, his person as God manifested in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3 and 16, his sacrificial death and his resurrection, which constitutes the gospel. You taught them that God used these men to let them know that Christ was and is the son of God. He is also the son of man, and as the son of man, he is the seed of woman, which is the ultimate destroyer of Satan and his worst, assuring us again that he will never leave us nor forsake us. You taught them that he is the son of Abraham, and as the son of Abraham, he is known as the world blesser. Assuring us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. You've taught them that he is the son of David. And as the son of David, he is Israel's king, the desire of all nations. Another assurance that he will never leave them nor forsake them. You've taught them that Jesus is exalted to the right hand of God. And he is the head over all the church, which is. his body. Pastor Oliver, I want to encourage you by the way of the Holy Bible to keep preaching and keep teaching to New Calvary to pick up the Holy Bible and read all about the different promises and the oaths that God made and that he keeps for all his promises are true for he is a man that cannot lie. Pastor Oliver remind them that one of his promises found in John 15 and 4, if we abide in him, the oath is he will abide in us. He promised in Malachi 3 and 10, if we pay our tithes, the oath is he will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing, one that we will not have room enough to receive. Pastor Oliver reminds them that 2 Peter 2, 3 and 7 says he promised never to destroy the earth by water again, and the earth is that it would be by fire next time. He promised in Philippians 4 and 7 that his peace which surpasses all understanding, and the earth... The the oath is that he will keep our hearts and minds through him. Pastor Oliver, keep on preaching and teaching what he promised in Philippians 4.19 to supply our every need. And the earth is through his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He promised in Psalm 37 and 4, if we walk upright before him, the oath is that he will give us the desires of our heart. He promised in Psalm 55 and 22 that we could cast our cares on him and the oath is because he cares for us. Remind them, Pastor Oliver, in Matthews 18 and 18 where he promised whatever we bind on earth, the oath is shall be bound in heaven. He promised in Matthews 11, 28 to call all those that labor and are heavy laden that he will come to them and the oath is that he would give us rest. He promised in Proverbs 22 and 6 that if we train up our children in the way that they should go, the oath is when they get old, they would not depart from it. He promised in Matthew 6.33 that if we would seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the oath is that all the other things that we seek will be added unto us. Remind them, Pastor Oliver, that he promised in Isaiah 1.19 that if we obey, the oath is that we could eat of the good of the land. Remind them, my brother, that he promised in John 14.13 whatever we ask in his name he would do, the oath is so that his father could be glorified in the son. He promised in John 14 and 2 that we could have a mansion in heaven and the oath is that he's going back to prepare it for us. But my elder brother, as you continue to preach and teach the word of God to New Calvary, you can remind them of another promise found in 15, 10, and 14. If ye will keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy 
joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. For greater love has no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if you do whatever I command you. And saints of God, I want you to know that Jesus laid down his life to prove to us that he loves us so that his promise is to his servant. Glory be to God. Those old Roman soldiers, they came to make a public mockery of our Jesus, or so they thought. But New Calvary, I believe in my heart that your pastor, your bishop, has just reiterated, reiterated to you on Pine Sunday and East and Resurrection Sunday about the agony that took place on the cross where Jesus endured all that pain so that he could fulfill his promises to us. Jesus could have stopped the crucifixion at any time. Why? Because he was God. But he allowed them to abuse him for us, to spit on him, to mock him and ridicule for us just to keep his promise to us. What a mighty God we serve. He had to fulfill the promises for our freedom to serve him. For our freedom, glory be to God, because he knew that nobody else could do it. Jesus fulfilled the promises in his life and God allowed it to be so, because the word says in John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. demonstrated his unconditional love just by fulfilling the promise never to leave us nor forsake us. Nobody took his life, but he made the ultimate choice to lay it down. Oh, hallelujah. And my brother Joseph of Arimathea, he came to beg for our Savior's body and laid him in a borrowed tomb. I know you all know that story by heart, but I just that by I to let you know that Jesus wasn't going to need that tomb very long because ha, in my mind, in my sanctified imagination, hallelujah, glory be to God, he took a nap from the cross to the grave. Hallelujah. That old grave could not hold our Savior after he was assigned to do what his father had him to do. Early one Sunday morning, yes, the belt of the break of day. He got up, yes, he did, with all power in his hand. And now he sits, glory be to God, on the right hand of our Father, making intercession for us. Hallelujah. And he resides, hallelujah, today with power and love, standing hallelujah as our mediator. Why? Because he had to fulfill the promises. But for him to fulfill the promises, the word says that it was expedient for him to go that way. Glory be to God. He told us through his prophet time and time again that he had to go away. Why? Because he promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And that's just how much he loved us. That way he had to send the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. But Pastor and Lady Oliver, I want to
Praise the Lord. What a mighty word. Powerful word. From the woman of God. And we are so grateful, Reverend Shirley. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Reverend Wright, for having her go deeper. <laughs> Praise God. I, I'm only standing here because I want to see if our pastor has some words he wants to share with us or say to us at this time. All right. Amen. Amen. So Reverend Shirley will come back and give us the benediction and dismiss us in any way she sees fit. Praise the Lord, everybody. I certainly hope that cop is a part of this church because God knows I'm shaking in my shoes. 
Thank you, Bishop Oliver, for allowing me to stand in my husband's stead. Thanks, honey. <laughs> New Calvary, thank you all so very, very much. You always make us feel extra special when we come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We do really appreciate it. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once more and again, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit abiding with us today. We ask you to continue to keep and use Pastor and Lady Oliver as thou see fit. We ask a special blessing be upon this entire congregation of New Calvary. Enlarge this territory for kingdom building, O oh God. Bless each and every one in our midst collectively and individually. Use them, O oh God, as vessels for you, God, as they continue to avail themselves to you. Now and unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion and power both now and forever and everybody that love God says Amen. Amen.